Ihr wart schon weg. Hammer, wie du dich bewegst in dem Outfit. Hammer, einzigartig, unglaublich. Hammer, du weißt, dass du über... Hallo alle, today we're talking about Wechselpräpositionen 2. These are changeable prepositions with the accusative and the dative case. So in episode 111, um, in German 112, you've learned about changeable prepositions. Let's see if you can't remember the song. So it goes, and I'll write them out as I quote unquote sing. So, an und auf, an und auf, hinter in, hinter in, neben über, unter, neben über, unter, vor und zwischen. Gut, vor und zwischen. Gut. So, hopefully you have these all memorized by now, no problem at all. So let's discuss how we really use them. So today we're really getting into the meat of the Wechselpräpositionen. So the topic of this chapter, chapter 17 in Berliner Platz 2, Berliner Platz 9, 2 to be exact, is Zimmereinrichtung. So we're putting rooms together. So in German, when you're talking about putting objects um, around spaces, moving objects in space, which we tend to talk a lot about, so this is useful, right? Uh, these are very, very relevant. However, it's also a real challenge to master um, exactly when these are used with the accusative case and exactly when they're used with the dative case. So all we can really do are examples, and I'll tell you guys how they work. So first of all, let's make a couple lists of verbs that you might kind of flag and be like, okay, so I bet this verb is going to be uh, flagging in the accusative case in the sentence. So, accusative. So these are verbs that you might use in this context of Zimmereinrichtung that might flag the uh, accusative case. In other words, they might ask, wohin? The question, where to, right? So where is something going, for example, in a room that you're putting together? So for example, stellen, legen, setzen, fahren, gehen, hängen put an asterisk by that for now. Okay, so those are wohin verben. So let's try the list of data verbs now. So dativ, which asks the question, wo, where is something located? So if you're just talking about where is something in a room, then it's the verb you're probably going to use will be paired with a dative use of that preposition. So, dativ verben, for example, stehen, liegen, sitzen, leben, just a couple, hängen. Good. So, some of these are going to look pretty similar to verbs that are on this side, right? So stehen, stellen, legen versus liegen, setzen versus sitzen. And there's a reason for this, because the meanings are related, but they're, the case is different. So let's, again, hope you've written these down. We'll do some examples using them. So again, the topic is putting a room together. So for an instance, das Bett steht neben Tisch. So let me know whether you think, I guess you can't really let me know, can you? But just think for a minute for yourself. We see steht, stehen. So is this going to be dative or accusative, this whole part of the sentence here? So you have to ask yourself first, what is being asked? So is this is this sentence about uh, something going somewhere? Is it about going to a particular destination or is it describing the location of something? In other words, is it a wohin or a wo kind of situation here? Well, it's a wo situation and we can see that because we recognize the verb stehen. 
So all this is saying is that the bed is standing, literally. I don't know. I think we don't say that in English, but das Bett steht neben hm, Tisch. So what would it be? So Tisch is der. So of course it would be in dative dem. Das Bett steht neben dem Tisch. The bed is next to the table. So let's take another example and you can tell me what you think it is. Is it accusative or dative? How about Peter legt das Buch auf Tisch. So what's being done in the sentence? So Peter is our subject, right? Legt das Buch auf bla Tisch. So we know Tisch is der Tisch. So legen, as we see in our verb list, is an accusative verb. So he is he's placing the book on the table, right? So we know that auf, just like neben, could go either way. It could either flag accusative or dative. But because in this sentence, in the se second example, there is a subject doing something, right? Then it's going to be, this is a direct object because of auf, it's in the accusative case. Well, this is a direct object. This is also accusative. So auf, what's masculine accusative? Den Tisch. So Peter legt das Buch auf den Tisch. Or another example, this time a question. Kann ich mich auf ble couch setzen? Kann ich mich auf ble couch setzen? So setzen we see up here, it's an accusative verb. So this person, so ich, I'm asking if I can, well, sit myself, if I can go sit, in other words, on the couch. And it's die couch. So what would it be in the accusative case? Die. Kann ich mich auf die couch setzen? Ja. So let's take a moment and just make sure that we know what our changeable prepositions are. The Wechselpropositionen. We have neben, auf, and here auf as well. Let's take another example. This time with fahren. So dieses Wochenende. Fahren wir in Bleu, in Bleu, Schweiz, so Switzerland, right? So Switzerland, Schweiz always takes an article, D. So dies Wochenende fahren wir in blank Schweiz. So what are we talking about? So here's our verb, fahren. Is this indicating that we're going somewhere? Is this indicating directional motion? Well, of course it is. So what case would this be in here? It would be in the accusative case, so in die Schweiz. Dieses Wochenende fahren wir in die Schweiz. Good. But if I said dieses Wochenende oder am Wochenende waren wir in blank Schweiz, what would it be? So as we know that in is a changeable preposition. So in the second sentence, what am I talking about? Is there a directional motion involved or am I just describing the position of something? Or in this case, the position of us, via. Well, the latter, right? So it would be in der Schweiz because Schweiz is die and dative feminine is der. So you can see, of course, that there are more verbs that flag accusative or dative kind of ideas, so to speak, than what's in our little list up here, of course, of course. But this list does help us to grasp the idea that if there's directional motion involved in the idea that a sentence is expressing, then it's going to be accusative case here. Or, as in this case, dative, if it's just talking about the location of something. So in order to really drive it home, let's use the tricky example of hangin', which we asterisked up here a couple times. So you see this in both verb lists, accusative and dative. So why is that? Well, because of the following. So let's say Andreas hängt das Bild 
on bleu wand. Jetzt hängt es an bleu wand. Tricky business. So wand means wall, right? It's the wand. So Andreas, this person, hangt das Bild an blank. So what am I talking about in the first sentence? See if you can fill in those blanks on your own. So one of these sentences is going to be expressing an idea of directional motion, and the other sentence is going to be expressing the idea of something simply being somewhere. And the latter will be dative, whereas the, f the former will be accusative. So which one is which? So I have a, a tip for you guys. If in a sentence you see a person or an, an agent, right, an actor, somebody who's verbing, who's doing an action, then a changeable preposition will probably be used in the accusative way, right? Because somebody is doing something, so there's probably some kind of action, some direction that's taking place. So you would say Andreas hangt das Bild an die Wand because he is in the process of putting it there, right? There's directional motion involved. Whereas the second sentence, even though it's the same verb, you'd see Andreas isn't a part of that sentence. It's just a description of where es is, of where das Bild is. So it's going to be dative an der Wand. So this is why hangen can be both accusative and dative because it can either express something, somebody hangs somewhere in the, in the process of hanging some, something somewhere, or it can describe that something simply hangs somewhere and the latter would be dative. So I hope that this is making some sense. Just practice, practice, practice. Und bis zum nächsten Mal. Tschüss!